Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with the second episode of my new series, Showdown Throwdown, where I play a couple of VGC 2016 games on Pokemon Showdown. You guys seem to have really enjoyed the first episode, so thank you so much to everyone who came out and supported it. It really means a lot, and from the feedback that I received, I think the most important thing I figured out was that I'm basically going to do this probably three to four times a week. You can expect an episode every other day, and in the days that I don't post an episode of this, I'll be working on additional content slash posting additional content. So right now I'm working on getting teams in game, and there will be a team building guide coming out very, very soon. So lots of good stuff to look forward to, but thank you guys for supporting this series. I know it's a little bit different from Road to Rank, but I'm glad that you guys still enjoy it. So we'll probably do around three to five games depending on how long each of them are uh, for a total length of around 25 to 30 minutes. So let's jump into the first game of today's episode. As always, if you enjoyed the series and want to show your support, please leave a like on the video. I would really appreciate it and it helps me uh, really get a sense of how many people are interested in watching this series. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, excuse the profanity from my opponent here. Uh, but my opponent's rocking a team of Groudon, Kyogre, Mawile, Crobat, Togekiss, and Smeargle. So, let's see here. Um, really interesting because we see the dual primals, and then we see a supporting cast of Mega Mawile, Crobat, Togekiss, and Smeargle. So Smeargle has been a really uh, controversial Pokemon. A lot of people are debating whether you know Dark Boy should be banned or not, um, and it's just really obnoxious to deal with in general. We do see the Gengar on my, or the uh, Crobat on my opponent's end, excuse me, I was looking at my Gengar. Um, so let's see how I want to approach this matchup. Tailwind is coming without a doubt. Uh, Smeargle could be annoying. The thing is, if my opponent leads with a combination of Crobat, Smeargle, and Togekiss, like if you bring two of the three, you can set up, but you can't do any offense. So it kind of has to pair it up with something offensive, so I should work on countering these three right now. Um... Kyogre as a lead is not bad, but my opponent does have the Grout on. So, let's see. Maybe I'll go with Gengar. Yeah, but Gengar doesn't do- I mean, Gengar does a lot against everything that's not Crobat, I guess. I mean, I could go for something like Kangaskhan, Gengar still. Kyogre in the back, and... Maybe I'll just go Firethorn since my opponent has no answer to it after Groudon gets eliminated. Alright, so I'll lock in and we'll see how this goes. And I typically ignore spectators slash opponents just so I can concentrate on the battle and since people on showdown sometimes get a little bit salty slash rude so uh, if I do end up playing anyone who watches the video I do apologize if it seems like I'm ignoring your messages I would just uh, rather concentrate on the game uh, than focus in game on chat and I, I love chatting with my fans but when it's for the sake of doing something like this I'd rather just focus on the game itself and you know you do run into uh, a lot of bad people on showdown because they think it's cool they think it's the internet and that gives them the ability to say whatever they feel like saying so it can be a little bit annoying that's why i don't like playing on showdown actually but uh we see the lead of crobat and groudon for my opponent which is a really strong lead i would say uh, since gengar is rendered useless so i think i'm actually going to pull the switch out into my kyogre uh, and go for a fake out but then you can just super fang yeah crobat's a problem crobat is definitely a problem so I feel like Groudon might protect here. Maybe I can just double up into Crobat, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. <clears throat> yep, and he does protect here. And we do see Tailwind as well. Uh, so we actually get the crit there on Sludge Bomb, and double edge here is enough to finish it off. So that was a great turn one for us, but now my opponent does have Tailwind up, and we're probably gonna see Smeargle come in, and we're gonna see Dark Void slash... Oh, nope, that's actually Mawile coming in, which uh, also makes sense. Um, hmm. The switch into Kyogre is so dang obvious. And I kind of want to conserve Kyogre for the late game, but my opponent might just have Eruption. I mean, I can Protect here to switch out, or I can Will-O-Wisp and go into Kyogre. I actually like that play a little bit more, forcing him to double up onto Gengar, and if he doesn't, then Mawile gets burned. And he goes for the Sucker Punch, excellent. And the Eruption, wow, that couldn't have played out any better. And we get the Will-O-Wisp to hit. So, first two turns have played out absolutely perfectly here. Um, let's see. So, if my opponent's last one is that Kyogre, then things are looking really good, uh, especially with no Togekiss or with no uh, Smeargle, which I'm very happy to do. Um, 
I could switch back out into Kangaskhan and protect here, and that's exactly what I'm going to go for here. Yeah, so he's going to switch out his Groudon, which I think is the best move. Uh, so I could have potentially gone for an attack there, but decided not to. Um, and he makes an excellent play going for the play rough into the Gengar slot. So very nicely done on my opponent's end there. And there is still one more turn of Tailwind, so I do have to be a little bit careful. But I think I'm just going to go for the fake out onto Kyogre. And maybe switch out here. Yeah. So I'm hoping he actually knocks my Kangaskhan out. Um, eh, actually, that wasn't a very good play. Oh, but he actually play roughs the Ferrothorn, which is excellent for me here. Since he's going to take Iron Barbs and Burn damage. So that's superb. So I'm just going to launch a double edge into Kyogre, nothing can really take it, and I will go for the Leech Seed here onto Mawile. Yeah. So this is looking really, really good. Uh, the lead I knew was a little bit difficult, but like I said, you know, all you have to do is try to play around it. Uh, and that's why Eruption is so risky, especially when you're running Tailwind. So he's actually going to bring the uh, Groudon back in, uh, which is a, might be a slight mistake here, since I pick up the Knockout onto Kyogre, which means I do have weather control for the remainder of the match, so now Kyogre will be able to seal up the deal. So Mawile comes back in. Um, so I'm actually going to sack the Gengar here, and I'm going to protect here just for Leech Seed damage. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is so I can get the Kangaskhan and the Kyogre in at the same time, and then that would just allow me to fake out and Water Spout slash Origin Pulse. So Gengar comes in here, Ferrothorn protects, he's actually going to go for the Earth Power here, and we're going to see the play rough. So, yeah, pretty interesting, I do think Mega Mawile is really, really good this year, I mean, it's... I would think the best Mega in 2014, uh, Kangaskhan obviously dominated 2015, but uh, Mawile definitely makes a reappearance this year for sure. So, let's see, um, not much you can really do here. I'll just sack both, I guess. Yeah. Might as well. Kyogre seals up the matchup. So just go for the Sludge Bomb, get some damage off. Uh, he actually overpredicts here a little bit, but you know, that's exactly why I didn't switch out into Kyogre. There's no reason to, since Kyogre wins me the match. So just playing as safely as possible here seals up the deal. Uh, and we actually take more residual damage on Groudon and Mawile. So we're just going to double protect here. And uh, yeah. So this is how you deal with Tailwind. You really take advantage and force your opponents one or two main turns of offense to uh, go to waste here. Uh, we actually see the Groudon's full moveset has Fire Blast, Eruption, Earth Power Protect, so obviously fully special here, no Precipice Blades, and that will be able to seal up the deal. So yeah, just going to taunt Gyro Ball here. He's going to protect, so he's going to go out, and we're going to be able to take a win in the first game of today's episode. Pretty fun game there for sure. I think uh, the beginning, like I mentioned, was scary, but... Like, you'd imagine how bad things could have been if he just went for the Eruption there with the Groudon, but... You know, Groudon's not a Pokemon that wants to take that fake out damage, and uh, you know, if you don't take that fake out damage, you avoid basically 25 to 30 percent worth of damage, and then you get the Tailwind up, and then you can erupt away. Whereas, even if you take a little bit of damage, your your damage output is slightly reduced. But uh, in that position, I think it might have actually been better for my opponent to just have gone for the eruption or any attack for that matter, because Kangaskhan and Gengar can't do too much. I guess if you go for the double edge Shadow Ball onto Gengar, it could be or to Groudon, that could be bad. But Crobat's the bigger threat there, so I was able to capitalize off that for my opponents and and take a win. But uh, this next game, my opponent's rocking a team of Groudon, Xerneas, Amoongus, Weavile, Salamence, and Aegislash. So we do see a different Mega this time, it is going to be Salamence. Um, so really, I think the last two games have featured the three top Mega Evolutions, Kangaskhan, uh, Salamence, and Mawile. I do think one that fits up with there is Gengar, so let's see if we run into any Mega Gengar teams. But uh, we do see the Xerneas on the Groudon core here, which is probably the most popular slash strongest one as of right now. A Weavile here making an appearance is certainly interesting because it's a very strong uh, option. You know, it's frail, of course, but you typically have a Focus Sash. And there's definitely the Tailwind option my opponents uh, end, which is scary, and Weavile in general is a little bit scary to deal with, so not particularly fond of that. And let's see what I want to lead with here. Intimidate. I feel like Salamence Weavile is definitely an option for my opponent. I could lead with something like Gengar Xerneas here, but I don't know how good Xerneas is when my opponent has a Moongus, Crowdon, and uh, Aegislash, so yeah, it's actually not a good choice. So I'll go with Gengar. Um, maybe I'll just go Gengar Kangaskhan. Definitely need Ferrothorn, and I'll go Kyogre. Seems like with this team, those are my four favorite Pokemon. We should see Weevil Groudon coming out from my opponent against my leads. So... The tricky thing here is Weavile does get access to low kick, so my opponent could just go immediately for the low kick, or you just fake out Kangaskhan and use something like a fire type attack. But the mind games are already starting. 
I think I'm gonna launch the Will O Wisp onto Weavile, and I'm actually gonna switch out into Kyogre here. Yeah, I like that play. So that allows me to. If Weavile goes for the fake out, I mean, Groudon here could press up his blades. My opponent could also be smart and double up into Gengar. Uh, but I don't really suspect that. So let's see. Weather is in my favor. Yep, we do just see the fake out come out here. So I do burn the Weavile, which is great. And we see the overheat, which is excellent. So perfect turn, really, for me here. So I'm going to go for the Water Spout for sure. Uh, who does Gengar I want to target? I feel like you're probably going to switch out Groudon, right? So I'll just Sludge Bomb Water Spout here. And here's the great thing when you win the Weather War with Kyogre. Uh, Groudon is basically forced... I mean, you can stay in and potentially risk an attack. And if you protect, like, that doesn't really help you gain much mileage. So yeah, we actually just see the uh, switch out into Amoongus here. So I get the Sludge Bomb and I get the Water Spout off. Oh, but he's got a Jack Bun on, on Amoongus. Excellent, excellent uh, item to have there. That's going to allow my opponent to shuffle in the Groudon once again and render my Kyogre's attack useless. So that was really, really cool. Uh, not the item I was expecting, but Amoongus nowadays doesn't need Rocky Helmet nearly as much. So yep, we are going to see the Groudon Primal come back in, and Water Spell is going to be rendered useless. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty clever solution to Kyogre issues, honestly. Hmm. Well, that is problematic, because now my opponent can just go for a Fire-type attack. And I'm not happy about that. Not one bit. Because the thing is, it forces my Kyogre to switch out, but I don't want to go down 4-2. So maybe I'll protect Kyogre this turn so I can get the fake out in. Yeah. I like that. So I will go for a uh, last ditch sludge bomb, and I'll protect Kyogre here. But man, that eject button was so clutch for my opponent. Yep, he's just going to go for the knockoff here and the uh, thunder punch. Okay, not the move I was expecting, but sure. <laughs> So that allows me to bring my Kangaskhan back in, so I'll be able to fake out here and uh, switch back out into my Ferrothorn. We all shouldn't be able to do too much right now, but I am playing down, so I do have to come up with something. And uh, that eject button was everything, honestly. My opponent did not have that eject button, I easily could have picked up two, uh, at least one and a half knockouts. Weavile would have fainted and Amoongus would have been down significantly. Uh, his Groudon sure could come back in, but then the Amoongus would be an Ice Beam knockout range. So I'm going to bring out Kyogre here. Let's see if Groudon protects there. He's not going to protect, so I'm going to be able to at least get some free damage off, which is good. He's going to go for the low kick, but because Weavile's burned, it's not going to be able to do too much here, which is nice. So, I wonder if my opponent will predict the Kyogre switching and go for another Thunder Punch, or whether he just... Actually, let's see the moveset he's had so far. So, we've seen Overheat and Thunder Punch. So, presumably a Ground-type attack and protect. So, no Eruption, I would guess, which is good. <laughs> but Thunder Punch, man, Thunder Punch. Um... Yeah, I mean, the Kyogre switching is so obvious here, I don't want to switch in for that reason. What, you probably low kick here? I mean, I could low kick Power Whip or Double Wedge Gyro Ball. I like that, actually. Yeah, and he switches out, nice. Uh, Sal Salomon's coming in, actually. He goes for the low kick onto Ferrothorn, that's not going to do anything because of the uh, burn. And maybe I should have doubled up onto the Groudon slot, actually. That would have been the better play. Yeah, I feel a little bit silly for making that play, but... Still ends up working out perfectly. I keep in my Ferrothorn, but, uh, you know, I pick up a knockout and do almost more over 50% to Salamence there because, you know, he's not Mega Evolved. So Groudon's going to come back in, but uh, it's still looking all right for me right now. But this is pretty important, right? Because if I lose a Pokemon, then I lose the Weather War instantly. But if he loses a Pokemon, so does he. Ooh, so the question here is what does he go for? The Salamence protect, because if Salamence doesn't protect, I can double edge and knock you out. Hmm, I guess the move I could make is go for the double edge and switch out into Kyogre. Though, oh wow, he, excellent, excellent. But does he Thunder Punch? Nope, he presses up his blades, which is not good, but he misses on the Kyogre, which is, Definitely unfortunate, that makes this match uh, 10 times more difficult, and uh, actually Ferrothorn can just win right now. Though I guess up against Amoongus is still a little bit obnoxious. But the miss there definitely makes things a little bit easier because Kyogre, it's a 2-hit KO on Kyogre, first of all. So, Groudon probably wants to protect here, right? Mm, I'll go for the Leech Seed here, actually. 
in case we get into a Ferrothor and a Moonbeast Stall War, and I'll protect with Kyogre. If he protects with Groudon, it's all over. But yeah, that was definitely a, uh, you know, the turning point in this battle, I would say, was being able to stay in with Ferrothorn and getting that knob out. But ooh, excellently played there. He actually just goes straight for the press of his blades and the spore. So uh, predicting the protect there on my end, which was a really, really clutch move. So here you definitely protect with your Groudon and you go for the spore. Oh, that was a great read on my opponent's end. Excellently done. Excellently done. But I don't want to risk... Because mm. then you can just... Okay. Yeah, it comes down to whether I have a one-turn sleep, I think. I should have maybe just attacked there. But that was more of a 50-50 call than anything. Um... So I could just Ice Beam Amoongus here. But if he gets a press of his blades off, he actually knocks out Ferrothorn. But he has to protect here. He has to. But how much more mileage is getting Ice Beam off really even help me, right? Yeah, I'll just Water Spout. <laughs> and he gave it to me. There we go. That's why I didn't want an Ice Beam. I didn't want to read too much into it. And that should be game at this point. Oh, we missed Power Wave, but that's fine. I actually would wonder if he has Rocky Helmet. So I did get a little bit lucky avoiding the first press of his blades, but in the long run, you see, actually, I guess it doesn't even matter. Uh, Giga Drain's doing some decent damage right now, but it can take a couple more. Uh, he's not Rocky Helmet either. Yeah, so, I mean, if this were a real VGC match, Fire Throne would end up winning anyway. Okay, Ogre takes another turn to sleep, another Giga Drain. He's healing back, you see, but Power Whip's still doing all right damage. Uh, wake Up here would ensure the win. But uh, we actually take a three-turn sleep, so we're going to get into a Ferrothorn slash Amoongus uh, stall war, really. But I do have leftovers, and that's basically the game changer here. You know, he doesn't really have any option. He's going to protect, that's fine, because that just gives me a turn of protect uh, recovery. And Power Whip, you see, is still doing 10 to 14%. Giga Drain shouldn't do as much. He's going to go for a Spore, but that's obviously not going to do anything. Um... Now yeah, just power whip here. So yeah, the leftovers here is key, and the fact that Amoongus doesn't have Rocky Helmet or leftovers or Black Sludge for that matter means that I will be able to win. You see, his Giga Drain does less than I am doing, so not only am I doing more damage, but I'm also healing back everything he does every turn. So uh, there's no way my opponent can really win this one. He's gonna make it long and draw it out. Um, let's see, power whip. Finally miss one. Yeah, Power Whip's accuracy is a little bit shaky, but uh, I still like it more than Seed Bomb, honestly. But maybe I'll consider it in the future. I can definitely see myself like losing a tournament because I missed the Power Whip, and I'm like, oh, there we go, another miss. <laughs> um, and I haven't, have, haven't actually really tested Seed Bomb, so perhaps it's better. So we'll take a look at that after. But it's kind of just a stall war right now. I mean, I hope my opponent realizes he literally has zero way to win since I will be at 100% HP for the remainder of this battle. Um, and sure, I'm running out of power whip PP, but then I can just jar a ball away. So yeah, kind of a drawn out stall war. So I'm going to look for another battle in the meanwhile and just cycle through. Keep this in the background. But yeah, next game we've got Kangaskhan, Xerneas, Talonflame, Groudon, Amoongus, and Whimsicott. So Tailwind options... Redirection, Primal, uh, Mega, Legendary. Uh, it looks like a strong option. Okay, finally. So we pick up second win there. So two more games probably. Starting off 2-0. Uh, definitely a good day so far. But let's see. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So I'll leave Gengar. Kangaskhan probably. I kind of want to go Gengar. Nah, Gengar, Kangaskhan the way to go. And I'll still just go with Kyogre and Ferrothorn. Yeah, I just go with these four, seems like, all the time now, but I, it's my favorite. So I'm gonna taunt. Could go for the fake out, or I could just low kick. It's worth considering, but nah, I like the fake out taunt play. It's the safest play. So that'll allow me to just shut down Amoongus instantly, and then I can just target uh, Kangaskhan with a Will O' Wisp and a double edge. The question of whether Kangaskhan is Protect or Fake Out is always interesting, since that was such a big option in 2016. Uh, so we both Mega Evolve here, I'm gonna get the Fake Out off first, which is excellent. Unless he has Mental Herb, 
He goes for the Rage Powder, so hoping that I low kick probably, but doesn't work out in his favor. That is excellent for me. This next turn is huge. So that's going to allow me to actually just get the Will-O-Wisp off against Kangaskhan. I could double up into it, but I think I'm actually going to double Edge Amoongus. Predicting the switch out into Groudon, Xerneas, or Talonflame. Though I guess you only have Groudon and Xerneas in the back, right? And he goes for the Sucker Punch, but I'm sorry, that's not going to be good for you. Going to get a double edge off here. He is going to have the Rocky Helmet. I get a crit there on the second hit, actually. And he... Wow, he... Uh, oh my goodness. That was absurd. He almost knocks out my Kangaskhan because he has... Wow, and I just realized that was a double crit onto a Amoongus. But, yeah. So, <laughs> that was definitely interesting. Basically, what happened there was that he has, um... Wow, I am blanking out on the ability right now, but it's not Regenerator. It's Vexpor, that's what it is called. Um, so, I uh, missed the Will-O-Wisp, which was a little bit unfortunate because it forces me to do uh, more stuff here, but... You, you probably Sucker Punch here with your Kangaskhan, right? So I could switch out to get Fake Out Pressure for a turn, or I could just attack. I'll just Sucker Punch here. Uh, but he switches out. That was really well called. Hmm. That was well done. Very well done. Ah, I should have double edged. That would have probably just won me the game, but I got caught off guard. This is tricky, because I can't just bring in Kyogre, because he's just going to switch into Groudon. Uh, I guess I can bait the switch out, though. I'll Sludge Bomb and switch back out into Ferrothorn. But yeah, Groudon is still obnoxious to deal against. Mm. Was not expecting the Amoongus to stay in, first of all. Was not expecting to take that much damage, but I should have expected the Rocky Helmet recoil, yes. And there's the switch out into Groudon, yeah. But even with these predictions right now, I'm not sure if that's enough to win me the match. He actually goes straight for the Brave Bird onto Ferrothorn, which is uh, actually maybe exactly what I needed. As I do pick up the knockout, so no Tailwind setup for my opponent, but I'm really sad I wasn't able to burn the Kangaskhan earlier on. Uh, however, I still will be able to do so in the later match. But uh, this is kind of huge, because Kyogre might be able to just win me the match. So I thought this would be over, because I thought Talonflame was just going to go for a Tailwind, but apparently not the case here. Fine, so I could just Sludge Bomb. I kind of want to double protect here. And I'm going to go for that. See what he goes for. Because in this position, you might be tempted to, say, switch out, or do something of the sort. There we go, he does switch out. <laughs> Excellent, and he goes for the Spore onto Gengar. Um, but still not over yet, because the question is, does he low kick me? So I'm going to Will-O-Wisp for that reason. Actually, this is... <sighs> I kind of wish I attacked there. That would have won me the match. I think you low kick here. What do you do? Redirect with the Moongus? Hmm. So I'll Will-O-Wisp and... Switch out into Kyogre. Woohoo! Well... I guess that works out, right? Because he's probably going to spore my Gengar here. Yeah, but then now I just have advantage with Kyogre. I literally just water spout and I take a turn of uh, sleep. So that was a pretty big deal because Kangaskhan was faster, so he switched out first. And that allowed me to actually just, yeah, capitalize off that. He's going to switch out, but that means that he loses his Kangaskhan. And I burn a free turn of sleep there with Gengar. Yep. So now all I have to do is switch Kyogre back out and then just Water Spout for the win. So I'm just going to Sludge Bomb, switch out. And yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I thought the game was over when Talonflame came out because I was like, all he has to do is Tailwind and I don't have enough resources at this point to deal with it, but I don't know whether he had it or not as uh, I actually wake up here with my Gengar. Uh, the lead matchup was pretty huge here too. I mean, he's going to get the Eruption off, going to be able to pick up the Knockout, but that doesn't matter since all I need is the Kyogre here. So I'm just going to Sludge Bomb Water Spout and pick up the win here. So I think we have time for one more. Let's see if we can fit one more game in. Uh, but this has been a really fun episode for sure. Sludge Bomb and Water Spout, and that's enough for the win.
Nice. It's almost at 1400, which is cool. This will be our last game for today's episode. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, please show your support by leaving a like in the video. Uh, it's been a really fun couple of games, or really the last two episodes have been enjoyable. So let's see if we can keep our winning streak up so far. As we got Jump Bluff, Gengar, not Gengar. I always look at Groudon and I just think Gengar for some reason because of the G. But Jump Bluff, uh, Kangaskhan, Talonflame, Xerneas, Scizor, and the Groudon. So a Scizor is really interesting. It's really good, I think, because of its ability to Sword Stance. And uh, it was my favorite Pokemon in 2012 and 2013. Um, and I was able to win Nationals with it in 2012 and Top 16 in 2013 with it. So definitely very near and dear to my heart. But let's see. My Jump Bluff here is also interesting. I think Gengar is always is a very good lead option. Yeah, I still like Gengar Kangaskhan here. <laughs> I might just go with Kyogre Ferrothorn once again. Yeah. See, like, Xerneas is really good, but every team now has at least, like, two resist to Xerneas. So, like, Xerneas is one of those Pokemon where you bring against opponents that, like, didn't properly team build or opted to neglect the Xerneas matchup, and you fully take advantage of that. But most times, honestly, it's not that helpful. Uh, because... Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's not most times. And I also probably don't know how to properly play Xerneas quite yet, uh, since I haven't been using it too much. But... It's still really good, I mean, especially if you save it in the late game, but when you look at my opponent's team composition, I mean, it's almost all physical-based attackers, like Kangaskhan, Talonflame, Scizor. My opponent's got his own Xerneas, like, I think it's really helpful to bring your own Xerneas when your opponent has special attackers, like Primal Kyogre and the Swords, because then you can just Geomancy up and their attacks do less damage, but, you know, it's not the case in this, given that my opponent has dual priority, which already makes Xerneas' job a little bit more difficult. Um, a Kangaskhan, which is always annoying to deal with since return slash double edge still does a lot of damage, though Xerneas is ridiculously bulky. So, let's see how this final match plays out. I'm gonna lead with my Gengar and my Kangaskhan once again against the Talonflame and the Xerneas lead, which is quite excellent for me. I'll be able to go straight for the Taunt onto Xerneas and the uh, Fake Out onto Talonflame. However, there are a lot of good moves my opponent can make here, for example, going straight for the Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam, so that I lose my Sash. Um, Talonflame here could have Quick Guard for all you know. Uh, there's a lot of options here. And Talonflame, of course, when you see Talonflame, you should probably expect Tailwind, which was actually what I was expecting in the last match, but not the case. But either way, decent lead matchup here. I mean, you really want to make sure you have your answers to Xerneas. Which always is, you know, it's kind of interesting, right? You ask yourself, do I lead with Xerneas or do I keep it in the back? And then as the opponent, you ask yourself, do I counter Xerneas very diff you know, hardly in the beginning or do I have answers to it in the back? But uh, he actually switches out into his Kangaskhan. So I'm going to be able to get the free fake out here. But unfortunately, you know, not taunting um, the Xerneas instead of taunting the Kangaskhan. But uh, it could be worse. So let's see. That was... Obviously a good first turn, but the taunt of the Kangaskhan is rendered useless here. His Kangaskhan can go straight for a fake out onto Mad Gengar or a I'll just go for an attack, like a low kick. And he kinda has to fake out here, right? So I'll Willow Wisp here. And I guess Talonflame is a bigger threat, right? Since I have Fower Thorn, so I'll Willow Wisp double edge. Mega Evolve does fake out the uh, Kangaskhan here, okay. And we do see the Tailwind come out. Yeah, that's to be expected. We do get the burn here though, which is good. Let's see, so now you probably Brave Bird slash Low Kick maybe? Question mark? Hmm. So I could Sludge Bomb. The question is, I really wanna switch out here. Ooh, this is tricky. I do want to think about this correctly, since the Tailwind isn't the biggest of deals right now, given that my opponent doesn't have Groudon or a set of Xerneas. You could also Brave Bird Sucker Punch Gengar, which would be a great play. So you could protect Gengar and switch out, which is typically the safe play when you have Tailwind up, but sometimes you want to just go straight for the offense, as we've demonstrated. Okay. So with Kangaskhan and Talonflame, we know Xerneas, Groudon is probably the last one, so Ferrothorn is pretty important, so I'd rather not have it take too much damage. Yeah, I'd rather just eliminate Talonflame, I think. So I'll just go for Sludge Bomb, and uh, maybe I'll Sucker Punch here. Yeah. Oh, but he gets a crit! That sucks. And he Power Up Punches there, okay, so I at least pick up the knockout here onto Talonflame. Taunt wears off, but that doesn't really mean diddly squat. So I'll bring in Ferrothor now. Look, the burn on the Kangaskhan is still good. I guess the crit could have actually helped me out a little bit since I was going for the low kick. Um, 
But this is good, actually. This is excellent as Ferrothorn's able to come in right now. Because I can just Gyro Ball right now. He might switch Kangaskhan out, though. He is faster, so I would actually win that war. Hmm. I guess I'll just Sludge Bomb Gyro Ball here, though. Because neither of his Pokemon... Like, this is the perfect shutdown to Xerneas right now. Uh, this is how we waste Tailwind turns. Like, you can't do anything. Kangaskhan can Sucker Punch or Power Up Punch, but the fact he doesn't have Low Kick is huge because it means his answers to Ferrothorn are even worse than I thought. So, uh, the Kyogre here will be able to deal with the Groudon in the back quite nicely. So, let's see. I think my opponent's options here, I mean, he actually just protects, which is really bad for my opponent. He gets the Power Up Punch, but with the Burn and the Rocky Helmet damage and the Sludge Bomb, that's going to be a knockout on a Kangaskhan's end. And then I'll be able to stall out Tailwind as I'll be able to bring in my Kyogre successfully as well. And Gengar has not lost his Focus Sash yet either, so excellent. Perfect turn for me there, as Groudon's going to come in for my opponent. Um, he could precipice, even a combination of, yeah, I'm just gonna bring out Kyogre so he can't fire type attack my Groudon, or my Ferrothorn, and I'm just gonna Gyro Ball the, uh, Xerneas here, which should be a knockout, but he is smart enough to go for the Earth Power and the Dazzling Gleam, yep, that's the right play here, but that's not enough, Gyro Ball comes out, picks up a knockout, and that's game, <laughs> nice, excellent, 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 what a fun episode, so four wins I think that was, um, and yeah, it's gonna be it guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, it was around 30 minutes in length, a little bit longer. So let me know if you guys like this length. As I said, I will probably do this every other day. So you can expect another episode of Showdown Throwdown in uh, just two days. So really hope you guys enjoyed this series. I actually have a lot of fun recording and it allows me to talk a little bit more throughout my thoughts and whatnot. As always, leave any feedback. Please, please, please share your support by leaving comments and likes. I would really appreciate that as we continue to, you know, shoot and record the series. But yeah, it's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. All right. Peace.